Music is definitely in my blood. My parents are both musicians, and I was lucky that at, at a very early age they exposed me to all different styles of music. But jazz came a lot later for me. I think that my initial interest in it was sparked when I started watching Treme, the HBO series by David Simon, which takes place in New Orleans. It was my first real glimpse into the whole New Orleans jazz world, which is so unique and special. I've been to New Orleans once and, of course, fell in love with it immediately. As an artist, it's a dream town to visit with music on every corner, the brass bands, the music spilling out onto the street from the open windows of all the venues in the French Quarter. Watching the series um, gave me a better understanding of how community-minded and driven the whole jazz scene is there. And I just wanted to learn more about it, about the history of jazz and just about the music in general. So I just got my hands on anything that I could, um, podcasts, documentaries, audio books. My love for jazz really started to develop over the pandemic when I was in lockdown, home all the time in the kitchen cleaning and cooking and I always had jazz on and I just was listening and learning. And um, I just started learning more of the, the names, the names, the tunes, the artists. And one day um, I heard Billie Holiday's Blue Moon and I knew immediately that this version was unlike any other that I'd heard before, that her version was different. I got hooked on Billie, I fell in love with her, I just started learning more of her songs. And um, I was watching Ken Burns' jazz documentary and uh, Wynton Marsalis said something about her that really stuck with me. Um, that Billy has a toughness about her. And when she sings, you can hear the emotion and sadness in her voice every time she sings. But even through all that, she's still able to convey the joy. <laughs> Billy, um, <clears throat> this happens every time I start talking about her. She's my jazz angel. Um, Billy is obviously something special, like nobody else, um, before or after. Uh, but that ability she has to show both sides at the same time, that to me is what jazz is. You know, I think it it represents um, the pain and suffering of our past, our American history, uh, where it all started, the birthplace of jazz in New Orleans, and you know what the slaves went through at that time. Um, they had to persevere, but somehow they were able to find the joy in everyday life through music and dance. Um, at Congo Square, I believe they were able to congregate once a week. Ultimately, though, I really fell in madly and deeply in love with jazz is when I started connecting with musicians, modern day musicians on um, social media during the pandemic. Uh, musicians who would normally be traveling the world doing gigs, but since they were on lockdown, I was lucky enough to connect with a few of them and do some projects remotely. And they were so open-minded and gracious and kind enough to do these projects with me. I started 
connecting with more and more of them, I saw there was this great little community and family of jazz musicians that not only that clearly love what they do and are committed to their music and their work, but who care about each other. And um, I just want, guess I wanted so desperately to be part of that world and to give my life more meaning and purpose, especially during that dark time. So that's how I really fell in love with jazz. I fell in love with the people who are, who are keeping it going, keeping it alive for the rest of us to be inspired by. And when you, um, when you discover something like that, no matter what age you are, no matter what phase of life you're in, you know, I know now in my heart that jazz will be, be with me for the rest of my life.